Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, The Hungry Gamer is back with another episode of The Monthly Menu. And today, we are talking about the top five games of July 2023. Now, this was, like last month, another month of a lot of games played a few times. And that's because of conventions. There was the end of RageCon towards the beginning of the month. And then at the end of the month, we had Powdered Wig Con video coming on that too, guys. But, and we had that, and so, but so we had that at the end. So that meant a lot of games kind of just spread out very, very thin for the most part. So I actually had nine games tied for number two, nine. And so I had to go through and I had to look at hours played. They were all done in meat space. So I went through, okay, which ones did I spend the most time on? And that's how I determined. So, so there's actually a lot of games I kind of missed the cut for this video. But to start out, we have last month's picks. How did I do? Starting out with the list, again, didn't happen. My wife did, my wife and I did play a lot of games, but we played a lot of them at Powdered Wig Con, and she was, she actually played a whole day of games, which was awesome for me. And, but none of them were actually on the list. Many of them were on the list, but they had already been checked off. So, no, not the list. Red Dragon Inn. And I put this out as Red Dragon Inn. And, and I put this out as could be Tales from Red Dragon Inn, could be Red Dragon Inn, could be Battle for Greyport. Didn't happen. I really thought we were going to play a Powder Wig Con, just a basic Red Dragon Inn. It just, just never happened. Never got to it. I really wish I did. So, nope, no to Red Dragon Inn. And I didn't play Tales from Red Dragon Inn because I'm not done painting yet. I just haven't enough time to sit down and finish painting. Next one on the list was Furnace with the expansion. And yes, yes, I did get to play Furnace. In fact, I actually played Furnace twice. Once just base Furnace, because I taught Mark Dainty out of Powder Wig Con, and then we played again with the expansion. And so I was really happy to do that. The expansion adds some really cool stuff to the game, like really cool stuff, all simple, but it takes one more step in complexity that I think really makes this game pop. And it adds a solo mode, which I haven't tried, though I am curious to try it. The next one on the list was Fox and the Forest Duet. And nope, we did not play it. Uh, I thought we would, it just did not happen. So that's two months in a row for no Fox in the Forest. And two months in a row for no Red Dragon Inn. And the last pick was First Rat. And yes, I actually did get to play that twice. I played it once, one-on-one -on -one with my wife. We had a very good time. And I played it once against Peter Vaughn of Cardboard Alchemy and Mark Dainty from Not Board Gaming. Kind of a late-night powdered wig con. Uh, I've lost all the games, haven't been close in any of them, but it's fun. It's a super light, super cute little game that I'm definitely definitely going to be making a video on that and looking forward to actually trying the solo as well. Very cute game. It's, it's, it's very much a race game. You're racing to get things done, and it's just, it's just a delightful family weight game. Now, moving into the top five from the month, and again, these first four that I list were all tied. And so again, going on pure time played. So coming at number five is Distilled. And this is one that I talked to the designer at Origins and he sent me home with a copy. And I'd played once at DonCon, DonCon 2, I should say. And I left fine on it. And it, it was at the bottom of my list of DonCon games simply because, and I, I thought this was because, because it was a, Max player count. It was slower. I don't know. I think we started at 11 p.m. or something. I had a long day of work. I was exhausted. And I left thinking, I said, well, I didn't dislike that. But all I could say about it was, I'd like to play again. Well, I finally did get to play again. I played again a couple times against Mark Dainty. We played head to head a few times. And that's a delightful game. Like, I really enjoyed it far more than my hopes had suggested I might. And that's a weird thing to say, but I'm going to go with it. And I just wasn't sure if it was going to be something that really grabbed me, or if it was going to be something like Wingspan, which I, I will happily play Wingspan, but I don't love Wingspan. This one feels around the same weight, but it does some stuff with some randomness and some chaos that I really like that makes the game thematic and makes it particularly interesting. So Distilled came in at number five. At number four is one I just released a video on, that is Astra. And this is a Euro and right, I'm calling it with dry erase boards, and what makes this game interesting to me is it's got a real timing aspect of you really got to pay attention to what the other players are doing 
and what it is that you need and kind of snipe in and grab these constellations at the last minute, the last second, or just get on the card so you get rewarded when someone else finishes it. And it's a slower blank and write game. And it's a, in some ways, it's a heavier blank and write game because there's lots of different things that you're managing. But it's a very interesting game. And, and again, it's not one that's for everybody, but it's definitely one that, for the moment, is definitely staying on my shelf. Number three is one I've talked about a lot. That is Wander, the Cult of Barnacle Bay. We are racing in on the end of the campaign. For me, the third time I played through the campaign. And I just had... And I just got the message this morning that Original Don's son, Adrian Gilstrap, one of the two designers of Backyard Chickens, has picked up the surprise release, two new characters that are available at Gen Con. So I'm going to get a hold of those and get to get those right into some of the games I'm going to be playing of Wander because we are, I think, three games away from finishing the campaign again. So two new characters means I'm going to get to play one against one of the bosses and one against the other boss. And I am very, very excited about it. And then, of course, I'm super excited about the new stuff coming. The number two on the list is one that was my runner-up game of the year in 2021. And that is Dwellings of Eldervale. And this is a game that I just think is fantastic. It's just so good in so many ways. And because Peter Vaughn was up here, and Mark Dainty also likes it a lot, we busted it out on Thursday night before Powderwood Con started and just had a really good three-player game. I say it was really good because I whooped them. I tried a strategy I'd never tried before, and it just paid off in spades. It was great. And we had such a good time. We said, you know, we want to get a five-player game of it. So we planned out a day when we knew there would be exactly five people here because someone else was coming in after lunch, and we planned it out and we played it again. And just, it was such a blast. I, I think I got a fourth out of five maybe or maybe fifth out of five on the rerun i tried a different strategy that did not work at all <laughs> but it was just it's such a wonderfully balanced game with just the right amount of dice chucking in there the just for the right amount of risk and chaos great game love it i should play it more and i'm not going to say i'm committed to playing it more but i should play this game more that brings us to number one. Number one is Adventure Tactics. And I had to, I, this is one that's been on my shelf for a long time, and I just, and I hadn't busted it out. And because, at first it was because the player boards were a disaster from the original printing. So I was waiting for the new player boards and waiting for the new campaign stuff to arrive. I got the expansion and waiting for this, waiting for this, waiting for that. And then it just sat on my shelf. And so finally I painted up three of the minis. You have to have at least three. And I just put it through its paces, and what a delightful game that is. And I needed to play it because I was making my new, my revised top 10 dungeon crawls. And I just had a feeling that it might be on the list. And so I spent a week, week and a half, and just played through a huge chunk of the campaign. So I haven't finished it, but what a delightful, fun game that has some pretty good replay at least considering how you build up your characters. It does one of the things that I like about Wander Barnacle Bay, where every time you play through, you can build your character a little differently. Well, this one, every time you play through, you can build a drastically different character. It's just fascinating how much character agency you have when you play this game. So that brings us into this month's picks. This month's picks, I'm going to leave on the list for three months in a row, Red Dragon Inn. In some, some fashion, we're going to do it. Obviously, the list... Next, I have Frostpunk. Now, now, Frostpunk is a game that Glass Cannon was so kind to send me a while ago, and I've just been so intimidated by it. And I just hadn't played it. And Mark Dainty loves it. He was out here, and I said, will you teach me? And we set it up, and we played through a game. It took a long time, and we got whooped. I'll say Mark killed us all. He blew up our, our heat generator. But... It's really cool. There's a lot going on. And this is one that might wind up in my top 10 crisis management games when I, when I finish that list that I'm working on. I'm really intrigued by this game. And now that I understand it, I'm less intimidated by it. And I'm looking forward to getting a video done. Though I'll tell you right now, it's going to have to be a mini review because I don't know that I can play it on my table here in my game room. But... Frostpunk is one of them. And then again, on the list again for the third month is Fox in the Forest Duet. I will get that played. 
And then the last one is a recent Kickstarter delivery called Life of Amazonia, which is just so pretty it needs to be played. Now, it is the monthly menu, which means this is when I will talk a bit about channel membership. And channel membership, you just click on the link. If you're on a PC, there's a little button that says join right down below this video. In the description, there's a thing at the top. It's either a link or just something you can click on to where you can join the channel, become a member. Down below the screen, actually probably going this way, I think. I'm not sure which way, but whatever. All of the current channel members are listed. Thank you all so very much. There are some benefits that you get with it. If you are just a member at all, you get posts that you see just for you on occasion. There are some videos that you get to watch early. I post them only for channel members to watch. Sometimes they come out a few days early. Sometimes they're upwards of a month early. At the next level up, you get access to some of the special videos that I do about stuff that's coming in, my initial thoughts on them. And you actually have the ability to request other kinds of videos that are just for the second tier and above members. And then if you come at the top, 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 top tier, I will play games with you monthly on whatever digital platform that you like. And so again, thank you to all of the members. It just, it helps me so much keep doing this, going to conventions, getting equipment for videos and all of those things. And then also occasionally backing games that you all want me to cover or buying games you want me to cover. And it just helps me do that. It helps me keep making this. And we're talking as little as 99 cents a month. So in any event, that is channel membership. I will only talk about it at the end of the monthly menu. You could just skip this, but thank you to everyone who is a member currently, everyone considering it. And if you're not considering it, that's okay too. Thank you for just being a subscriber. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become that channel member. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.